One of the most commonly used drugs in the U.S. is also one of the deadliest. That's alcohol. Over the last 20 years, more and more Americans have died from alcohol-related causes, and a new study reveals how those deaths have surged recently. William Brangham takes a closer look. The CDC issued this new report, and it looks at both deaths directly tied to alcohol, like cirrhosis of the liver, as well as indirect deaths, like injuries and certain types of cancer. It found that in just five years, alcohol-related deaths rose by 29 percent. By 2021, alcohol contributed to the deaths of more than 178,000 Americans that year. That's about 500 people a day lost because of consuming wine, beer, or other alcohol. For a broader look at these findings, we're joined again by Keith Humphreys. He's a professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at Stanford University. Keith, um, very good to have you back on the news hour. Were you surprised? I mean, this is your field of study. Were you surprised by these numbers and how much they had ticked upwards? Sadly, I am not. Um, we noticed during the pandemic that certain groups of the population were increasing their drinking, including drinking alone and drinking in large amounts. And also, there's been a long-term trend, although cost of living is going up for many things. It is not for alcohol. Alcohol is very cheap in the United States right now in historical terms. And when it's cheap, Americans tend to drink more, and that's where you get, unfortunately, these kinds of really tragic numbers. And are those the principal drivers, low price and, and the, all the stresses associated with the pandemic? Those two things are, are absolutely critical to producing uh, this kind of increase. I mean, we have, you know, federal alcohol taxes were last increased in 1991. They've been declining in real terms ever since. Um, alcohol taxes on uh, craft beer and spirits were actually cut just before the pandemic. And that has always uh, historically driven more consumption. The other point to remember, of course, is that alcohol is a legal product and therefore one that is heavily advertised. And we do know that the amount of promotion of alcohol, which anyone who has watched a football game is aware of, also helps uh, keep the business flowing and uh, keeps people uh, drinking, including sometimes, unfortunately, too much. I mean, I can't help but notice you and I have talked many times over the years, but we were always talking about illicit drugs, illegal drugs and policies to address those, never about alcohol. I mean, is that, is that just like, as Orwell says, that the struggle is constantly to see the thing that is right there in front of us? It, it's a huge blind spot uh, in American drug policy. You can talk about drugs for hours, and people will mention fentanyl and meth and cocaine, which are, of course, very important drugs to think about, and they do a lot of harm. But no one will bring up alcohol. And afterwards, they may all get uh, a drink together and not even think, we're using a drug right now. And that's partly what the risk of alcohol comes from, is that those who use it uh, don't think of themselves as using a drug, and therefore they don't worry about it as much as they should. One of the things, back into the CDC's data, while more men died of alcohol-related deaths, the death rate increased for women quite dramatically. Why do you think that is? Very uh, tragic to see these increase among women's deaths, um, and also it's enraging to know where it comes from. So about 25 years ago, the alcohol industry observed that women were getting more education, more disposable income, but they weren't drinking that much. So they launched quite a bit of female-focused advertising, you know, creating, for example, you know, mommy wine culture and that sort of thing. And it worked, broadly speaking. We saw an increase in women's drinking, including in some populations drinking as much as men. And biologically, the same amount of alcohol in general actually is more damaging to women than men, partly to do for reasons of metabolism, partly to do with reasons of body size. And so we're seeing the, you know, the awful uh, outcome of a, you know, 25-year-long campaign to get women to drink more heavily. So in terms of solutions, what do we know that works on a policy level? I mean, you touched on some of these things, price being one of them. But what else can we do as a society to try to ameliorate these ills? Yeah, sometimes the, the simple answer is the right one. Uh, you know, alcohol is a commodity, like gasoline. People use less of it when it's more expensive. So simply indexing alcohol taxes for inflation so they don't lose value over a year, that would reduce people's drinking. We have very good demonstrations of uh, that fact in states and nations that have done it. And what about individuals? If someone personally feels like, you know what, I'm, I am concerned about this, what do we know works? 
So one thing I, I can say with optimism for anyone who's out there struggling with a drinking problem is there's about 23, 24 million Americans who have had a serious problem with alcohol or other drugs and are in recovery. Recovery is a realistic aspiration. It happens every single day. There's no one right pathway to it. There are people who benefit through uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, the, the mutual health program. There's people who benefit from treatment, from counseling. There's people who benefit from medications. There's also people who are able to change without any of those things, usually with some reorientation in their life, like engaging with people who don't drink and activities that are incompatible with drinking. So there's every reason to uh, believe that you can recover, and there's certainly no reason to feel ashamed if you have a drink problem. Uh, it's something that millions and millions of Americans uh, will go through. All right, Keith Humphreys of Stanford University, always so interesting to talk with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.